Welcome to Great Plains Lutheran High School and our graduation service for 2020. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. service continues with the response of psalmody. I'll read the sections marked for minister, and I'll ask you to read the sections and follow along with the sections marked for all. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he give you the desire of your heart. And may all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory. And lift up our banners in the name of our God. Some trust in chariots, and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. We pray. Dear risen Savior, at this time of graduation, we look ahead toward the future. No matter how old we might be, or where we might be running in our race that you have marked out for us, please do not let us forget that this world and all it offers are nothing next to the plans you have for us. You have us on the race that leads to eternal paradise. We do not deserve such a gift, but because of the perfect life you lived for us and the suffering and death you endured in our place, it is ours. 
Therefore, whatever opportunities or challenges may be allowed to cross our path, we praise and thank you for the blessed future you are willing to share with us. Lord, Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. Our lesson for today comes to us from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, reading verses 4 through 9. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Dear friends, supporters, teachers, parents, especially you, graduating class from Great Plains Lutheran High School in 2020. This is weird. This pretty much sums it up. This is weird. This is not what I was expecting a graduation service to be like in May. I'm sure that's not what you were expecting. I was expecting to be in a large room, talking to a bunch of people, getting to see your smiling faces, getting to see the happy tears and the last hugs, the last words being exchanged. But instead, I'm in an empty church building, speaking to a camera. This is weird. Your class is going to be different than any other graduating class GPL has ever had. But there is something that you can take away today. There's something that you can remind yourself is that your focus today and your time here at GPL has been the same for all the other graduating classes. 
That focus is on God's word. That focus is on living your lives for Jesus. Because you're not too young to be an example for the believers and for the world. Your class of 2020 picked a class verse. And that was from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And it says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Before we talk about this specific verse, I think we need to look at the context the letters 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus were all written by the Apostle Paul, and they're called the pastoral epistles, the letters written to pastors. When Paul wrote this, he was writing it to a young man, Timothy, who was a new pastor in Ephesus, in modern-day Turkey. Paul is writing this letter to Timothy to encourage him he said, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Timothy had been a follower of Paul throughout the Mediterranean world. He got to witness miracle after miracle. He got to hear the best sermons. He got to sit at the feet of a man who knew the scriptures backward and forwards. And now he's on his own. Now he's in his own church in Ephesus so Paul writes this to encourage him and to show him what, what godly leadership looks like, even in the face of internal oppression. This first letter to Timothy was really a recommendation letter for Timothy. He wanted to send it to the church of Ephesus for not only Timothy to read, but for them, so that they knew that this was their pastor recommended by Paul, who was recommended by God to serve them even though he was young. There are many members in Ephesus who would have been older, who would have been wiser, who would have had more life experience than Timothy. But Paul still says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers. And Timothy, you can do this in, in how you speak and how the way you conduct your life. And you speak and you act in love in faith, and in purity. Timothy was going to establish his credibility as a young pastor through his words and his actions. When I first heard that this was your graduation verse, it made me wonder, why? Why did you pick this Verse, out of all the verses in the Bible, why was it this one? Why'd you pick a one that was meant for a pastor? And I don't think any of you are going on to be pastors. Was it because Paul said, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young? Is this going to be your rallying cry as you go out from here? Are you going to think that Paul says here that you have to listen to me? Paul says you have to respect me. Paul says I can do what I want. I don't think that's why you picked this verse. But those thoughts do come into our head. I deserve respect. I deserve to be listened to. I deserve to do what I want. And Paul says, set an example for the believers. And I think you can look back on your time here at GPL And see all the different times that you did not set an example for the believers. And look back and see the times you weren't respectful, the times that you didn't talk the way you should, the times that you didn't act the way you should, the times that you sinned. I know each of us that is here today, watching, listening, we can add our name to the list of those that were not good examples to other believers. But Paul still has these words for you. 
Paul still has these words for me. The only reason that these are still for you and for me is because of what Christ did. Christ died for you. He set the perfect example of selfless love. Christ lived a perfect life. He took on all of our sins. He took on the guilt of the whole world, put them on himself, and was crucified on a cross so that your sins and mine were completely destroyed. You and I have victory because Christ rose from the dead three days after his death, claimed it for you. So as you go your separate ways in this life, you can have this verse in the back of your mind that you're going to live your life being an example for your fellow believers, being an example for your fellow classmates, staying connected to God's word, staying connected to them. But I think we can expand on this verse. You don't have to to live your life secluded. You are not too young to be an example for your fellow believers. You're not too young to be an example for the world. I know many of you are going to different colleges around the state into different states. There's many of you that are going into the military to serve our country. There are many of you that are going into the workforce. As you go on to these separate occupations, you still have that same focus. You still have that same opportunity to set an example to the world, to the people that don't know their Savior, that people that don't know the love of Jesus. And you're not too young to do that. That doesn't mean you don't have to start once you get your job or, or 30 years from now. You have the opportunity to do that right now. You have the opportunity to live your lives in love. Modeling the same selfless love that Christ had for you. You have the opportunity to live your lives in faith. Not keeping that faith of yours bottled up, not keeping it separate from whatever you do, making it who you are, making yourself different than the world, setting you apart from everyone else. And you get to live your lives in purity. The world is going to come after you, making you want to be impure. The world wants you to live your lives completely away from God's word and what it says. And you're going to slip up. You're going to fail. You're going to mess up. Jesus has promised you he's going to be right there with you. He's going to be there to grab your hand and bring you back to him. He's going to be there to welcome you. Jesus is right there with you. The circumstances we are in right now may seem weird. But this verse that you picked as your class verse, it is not. This is something that you can look back to throughout your lives, not just when you're young, but when you're older also. That you get to live your lives and get an example to believers and to the whole world. Because Christ was the perfect example for you. You get to live your lives because you have the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. God's blessings to you, graduating class of 2020. I pray God continues to shower his eternal blessings on you as you live your lives of faith because you know that you have eternal life in him. Amen. We continue now with our responsive graduation prayer. Again, I'll offer the parts marked for M for minister and ask you to join in with the sections marked for all the A. O Holy Spirit, sent by Jesus to guide us into all truth, 
Shower your gifts and graces on all graduates. Cause all of our graduates to be truly grateful for your gift of learning and for all who have helped them with their education. Enable them to use the lessons they have learned to advance in their welfare, to serve others in Christian love, and to glorify your name. As they step into an uncertain future, bless their future endeavors. Strengthen them through your word and sacraments. May they be comforted and reassured by your presence. Teach them to demonstrate true wisdom and understanding by, by fearing, loving, and trusting in you above all things. May they be your light in the world and keep your commandments. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name, who with you and the Father are one Lord, now and forever. Amen. May the love of the risen Lord Jesus keep our eyes ever focused upon him as our Savior. May the power of the risen Lord Jesus make us strong to run the race he has marked out for us. May the peace of the risen Lord Jesus give us joy as we live to his glory. Amen. Amen. Before I start, I want to thank and congratulate my classmates, and one in particular wanted a shout out. So Joe, here's your shout out. He is Usador, wizard of the twelfth realm of Ephesius, master of light and shadow, manipulator of magical delights, devourer of chaos, champion of the great halls of Tarrakis. The elves know him as Fiang Yelik. The dwarves know him as Zonin Hook Stanges. He is known in the northeast as Gasmuanius Maestar, and there may be other secret names you do not know yet. None of you are going to get that, but... Joe's okay with that. And I'd just like to say that I'm going to miss everything. I'm sure Jocelyn's done a great job reflecting on her four years here, so I won't be spending too much time on this. I'm just so grateful for every one of our teachers, from grade school until now, our pastors that have guided us on our spiritual journey, and all our parents that have done so much for us that it'd be impossible to write down or even remember everything. They've shaped us into the people we're going to be, and I'm sure that this moment means just as much to them as it does to us. Mom and Dad, I'm talking to you. Finally, I would like to thank my Savior who, in his ultimate wisdom, allowed this global pandemic to emerge. At first I was very frustrated, not knowing how this would affect not only my, but every class of 2020's graduations. But I'm not going to pretend that I understand his ways, I don't. But after having time to meditate on this, I have come up with something that I believe to be true. One thing is, no one is ever going to forget about this. And the second is that no one is going to forget about how we felt towards each other. Not being able to say goodbye, I was left without this feeling of closure. And I hated that feeling of my time being cut short. But what I realized is that that feeling is good. It reveals what I really feel about my classmates. That I love them like they were my family, and in Christ they really are. I know that God works everything out for the good of those who love him. And this is the good that he has given to me. He has let me understand that these goodbyes that I strive for shouldn't be my main priority. It should be living in a way that makes the goodbyes the hardest. To quote the last book I read in my English class, Let us learn to show our friendship for a man when he is alive and not after he is dead. We mustn't wait until the time comes to show our appreciation. We should learn to do it every day of our life, because we never know when the last time we see them will be. I think that our passage could also reflect some of that same meaning. The passage comes from 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. The first part of this passage is an encouragement to younger believers to let their own, not let their own age be an excuse to give up. Rather, we should realize that we, like Timothy, are ambassadors for Christ. People will look up to us and see the Lord through our actions. To our fellow believers, our family, we should show commitment to each other. Our love for each other through our actions, through the example that we set not only for ourselves, but for others. By doing that, our true Christian character that we have developed over these years will show. God through Paul gave this encouragement to Timothy and to us. And this encouragement not only applies to the greeting of fellow believers, but also the departure. What you will be remembered by is the impression that you make on others, 
We may have to say goodbye to each other, but we'll never say goodbye to memories and the friendships that we have made along the way. So thank you, Lord, for giving this opportunity to reflect on the gift of friendship that you give to us. May it grow stronger through this frustrating time. And remember, class of 2020, appreciate what you have, because God only knows what happens next. Class of 2020, we almost made it. I know this wasn't the ending of high school we had all anticipated, but it is the one that we got. Even though we are all miles and miles apart, we are still connected, and that is through God and His will for us. When I reflect on these past four years at Great Plains, I think of all the memories we made as a class. Between the Hunger Game competition, awkward speeches in front of the class, and other school events, we really had a great time together. We got to watch each other grow as students, individuals, and as Christians. We each had the opportunity to attend Great Plains and grow in our faith together. We've had a unique high school experience that few people our age could even imagine. We all got the chance to be included, play sports, participate in the fine arts, and connect with both students and teachers. It is interesting to look through the graduation booklet and see what everyone is planning to do with their life after high school. Some are expected and others are a total surprise. We all knew John was going to join the military, but I would have never guessed that Cam was going to be a teacher. It all seems fitting, however, considering the Lord has given us all different gifts and talents. When I was a freshman, I walked into the gym and I knew three people. I was terrified. I didn't think I was going to make friends or fit in. Then I realized I wasn't the only one. Though we were all set on the same path at GPO, we each had a different journey and experience. We all grew in separate ways and are all prepared to go out into the world. Every year of math class I took with Mr. Yeager, he started with this reminder. He was called to GPO to teach math, but his greatest goal for us was to grow in our faith. That always made me feel important and it gave me perspective. It is important in life to work hard and achieve great things, but it's also important to keep your heart and your eyes on God. It's easy to get distracted and to become disconnected with God. I hope that everyone from the class of 2020 becomes successful, but I pray that above all, we continue our journey with God. Congratulations to us, the class of 2020. On behalf of the graduating class of 2020, I would like to say thanks. First, thank you to our parents and families. Thank you for choosing to send us here, especially dorm students' parents. I know it can't be easy sending your child away and not being able to see them every day like you are used to. Thank you for always supporting us, whether that was when you came to a basketball game, a concert, or even just helped us with a project. Thank you to our teachers. The amount of work you put in to prepare us for our next step in life is astonishing. Whenever we needed someone to talk to, you were always there for us. The relationships you built with us show us that you want us to succeed. Thank you for all your time and effort. Thank you to my classmates. You all made these past four years of my life memorable. We have all made friendships that would last a lifetime. And it's okay that we didn't get to say goodbye because that just gives us an excuse to see each other again. Thank you to everyone who supports Great Plains. Through supporting GPL, you have made it possible for us to attend here. Through donations and volunteering, we are able to receive a good Christian education. And lastly, the greatest thanks of all goes to God. We thank him for sending his son to save us out of his love for us. We will be able to see him again in heaven where we will praise him forever. I never thought this day would come, not ever, especially not like this. But here we are, far apart, gathered in our own homes, celebrating this occasion. And I am honored to be able to speak to you today especially to you, Panthers and future Panthers. Through my years at Great Plains, I've learned a couple different things. I've learned math, English, science, and Spanish. I've learned ways to make friends and ways to make people mad at you. My faith has been nurtured and has grown immensely. I've learned so many life lessons, I can't even begin to count them. So many amazing memories surround this place, and I'm not the only one experiencing this. I've seen classmates out on courts and fields, pushing through physical pain to play a sport they love. I've seen many drama productions put on with heart from some of my peers. I've seen classrooms full of students trying to learn what their teachers are saying. I'm sure we all have. Sometimes, however, we only see what's on the outside and not what's going on on the inside. Do you know what else I've seen? I've seen people struggling. I've seen people feeling alone climbing a mountain without a top. But I've also seen that, even after slipping a few times, they get to the top with help. A common misconception about problems is that we don't want them, and having a lot of adversity is a terrible thing. But here's what I'm trying to say. 
It's not about never having problems to worry about, because that's unrealistic. It's about how we deal with those problems that helps us grow. In the Bible, God tells us that he uses adversity to strengthen us and our faith in him. A wise man once said, I don't make the same mistake twice. I make it five or six times, just to be sure. Now, that quote is meant to be humorous, but I think there's a lesson in it. Sometimes, a mistake has so much to teach us that it might take a couple tries to learn it all. Don't worry so much about only messing up once. It's okay to mess up, especially now rather than later. We're all here to grow together and to make mistakes together. A mistake I made freshman year was that I thought I was alone. I didn't talk to many people, so I didn't really know anyone. And the teachers are nice enough to answer questions that you have on their subject, but teachers aren't always around. You know who is? Your friends, and more importantly, your savior. So my final note to everyone listening is to get out there and explore. Try new activities and talking with new people. I'm not saying you have to make a bazillion friends. I'm saying don't put yourself on an island. Great Plains, just like our home churches, is a family, and we're stronger when we work together with Jesus to get through hard times, just like right now. I know many of you guys, and I know you'll do amazing things. Just never forget that you have a friend in your Savior. And a quick special thanks to my teachers, both here and in the past. I never would have made it this far without your continued support and pushing me to be greater. I'm sorry I don't have time to thank each of you individually, but if I could, I would. And a huge thanks to all my friends who have ever been there. I love you guys. Finally, thank you to everyone for an awesome experience. It's been great. Good morning, everyone. First of all, to all who are watching, I'd like to say thank you. I often tell people that we would not be able to do what we do in the way that we do it were it not for the support of God's people. That includes the families of our students, the extended families of our students, and it goes farther than that to the greater Great Plains Lutheran family. All of that support that we receive makes this ministry possible. To the parents of our students, and especially to the parents of our graduates, I want to say thank you. Thank you for entrusting us with the care of your children. That's not something we take for granted, and we pray that we have been faithful to that trust. It is our privilege to be your partners in the Christian training of your children, training that prepares them not only for what's coming in this life, but also, and more importantly, prepares them for heaven. And to you, the class of 2020, I say thank you. Thank you for being a part of Great Plains Lutheran High School. We pray that your time at GPL has been and will continue to be a blessing to each one of you. I also want you to know that you have been a blessing to Great Plains Lutheran. As a unique creation of God, redeemed by God with unique gifts and abilities, by being a part of Great Plains Lutheran High School, you make us better. You make us stronger. Through the thick and the thin, through the ups and the downs, on campus and online, you have made us stronger. May God continue to bless you and cause you to be a blessing to others as you run with perseverance the race marked out for you with your eyes firmly fixed on Jesus. Now it is my privilege to acknowledge that you have completed the course of study prescribed by our Board of Directors and our association. It is a curriculum which fully meets the graduation standards of the South Dakota Department of Education. It is a strong program. It is accredited by the Wells Commission on Lutheran Schools, by the National Council for Private School Accreditation, and by the South Dakota Department of Education. And so, with thanksgiving to God, we now recognize you as graduates of Great Plains Lutheran High School. It's now my privilege to present the Great Plains Lutheran High School class of 2020. After I read their names, I'll also read a Bible verse that they selected for this special occasion. Jan Andringa, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Emily Ashton, Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise him. Caitlin Bendix, James 1, verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Miranda Besick, Colossians 2, 6-7 So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Austin Biller, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Cameron Bulo, 1 Peter 5, verse 10. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Jonathan Bush, Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Kellen Davis, Genesis 1, verse 3. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Reagan Dieterling. Revelation 2, verse 10. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. August Gadsky, Habakkuk 2, verse 9. Woe to him who builds his house by unjust gain, settling his nest on high to escape the clutches of ruin. Jocelyn Gosh. Hebrews 13, verses 5 to 6. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Brian Knudsen, Psalm 25, verse 1. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. Li Wan Qian. 2 Timothy 4, verse 17. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength. Jasper Lean. Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Asher Lindemann. Joshua 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Andre Lubaya, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted... He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Andrea Lubaya, Exodus 15, verses 2 to 3. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has given me victory. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Benita Manzango. Psalm 23, verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Sean Pluger, Revelation 21, verse 6. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Caleb Roberts, Revelation 3, verses 10 to 11. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Alexis Charlemagne, Romans 8, verses 38 to 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christopher Schlecht, Matthew 28, verse 20. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Cameron Schmidt, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Paxton Schultz, Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joseph Tischer, Proverbs 21 verse 31. The horse is made ready for battle, but victory rests with the Lord. Stephanie Van Veen, Isaiah 26, verses 3 to 4. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, because they trust you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord himself is the rock eternal. Sarah Werner. John 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Dawson Wertink, Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Brooklyn York. Joshua 1 verse 9 Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And at this point I would like to note that Brooklyn has the distinguished honor of being the 500th graduate of Great Plains Lutheran High School. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to present your Great Plains Lutheran High School Class of 2020. Graduates, at this time, if you're wearing your cap or if you'd like to pretend, I invite you to turn your tassel from the right to the left as a symbol of this accomplishment. As we've reached the end of this school year, the service of Gina Radu and Chris Pluger among us concludes. Ms. Radu will be moving on to teach at Wisconsin Lutheran High School in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She'll be teaching math and doing some coaching. And Mr. Pluger will be joining Lutheran Bible translators to be begin work in Ethiopia next year, helping people translate the Bible into native languages. We are very grateful to our Savior for Chris and Gina's service among us, and we wish them God's richest blessings as they go forward.